The Damon Runyon Theater. Once again, the Damon Runyon Theater brings you another story by the master storyteller, Damon Runyon. And this one, Cemetery Bait. And to tell it to you, here is Broadway. Thanks. One day I get a call to go to the state penitentiary. I go there because a character by the name of Gentleman George sends for me. Now, being in such a place is no novelty for Georgie, and ordinarily will cause him no confusion. The trouble this time is that he is in what is called the death house. It seems that he has allowed visitors, and I am more than somewhat curious why he sends for me. So I overcome my natural repugnance at such institutions and go to see him. And he tells me a very strange story indeed, a one which I will tell you in a minute. Now, back to the Damon Runyon Theater and the famous story, Cemetery Bait. Like I say, I find myself at the state penitentiary. I also find myself sitting in the cell with Gentleman George, and he says as follows. It is very nice of you to come, Broadway. Maybe you wish to know why I get you up here. I am curious, yes. Uh Uh-huh. Well, as you know, tomorrow I am to be placed in Mr. Edison's rocking chair and given a severe shock in the seat of my britches. I hear that, yes. So I wish to tell you a story, because you are a good guy, and you will let it be known that I perform a great public service. You do, Georgie? I do. I wish all citizens to be more kindly disposed toward me. So I will tell you. Yeah, well, uh, uh, please make it short, George. I am getting a severe case of feeling cooped up. Sure. Well, it is in the summer of last year that Lou Adolia comes to me. You remember Lou? Oh, sure. He is a hot citizen who cases joints for diamonds and such. Yeah, and then he gets another citizen to knock over the joint. Well, like I say, Lou comes to me last summer, and he puts a proposition to me which reads like this. Georgie, I think I got a great job for you, only you'll have to go to Miami, Florida to knock it over. Okay, Lou, I do not mind traveling. What is the layout? Well, there's a certain doll married to a guy. Oh, next. I do not knock over guys so that dolls can have good times. Nothing like that. She's got a box full of rocks that'll bring maybe uh, 80 grand. Uh Uh-oh. Go on, Lou. What else? Well, I figure a good box man like you can saw through and pick off the stuff. You got a place to unload it? Sure, sure. Don't I always? Yeah. Okay. Give me the rest of the setup. Well, we'll go to Miami. I'll do another case job on the layout, and you can work your way through from there. It'll be a lead pipe session. So, Broadway, it is not more than a week later that I find myself on a train going to Miami, Florida. The way Lou talks, it looks like I am going for a cinch job. Then it comes up one night on the train, and I am as sick as a pup because I eat fish which I can never stand. I am on my bed when I hear a knock on my door. Who who is it? What's the matter in there? I am about to become a corpse. Go away. Let me in. I do. Come on, come on, come on. Maybe I can help you. Okay, just a second. All right, lie down again. I am sick. I am so sick. So I see by the color of your face. I didn't think you were born green. Where does it hurt? Stomach. Domain poisoning. I saw you eating fish in the dining car. I will die before my time. Nonsense. No one ever does that. Besides, you might be better off if you did. Not enough people know when to die. Please, you say you will help me? I will. I'll never get any sleep next door with you groaning and grunting all night. Uh, Porter! Porter, come in here, will you? What are you going to do with him? Send for some medicine. Yes, sir. You call me, sir? Yes, go to the dining car and get some hot water. Also, bring back some soda. A box full and hurry. Yes, sir. Right away, sir. Do I get anything to go with the soda? Shut up and lie still. (laughs) Look, mister. 
Why do you do this for me? If you've got any stupid notion that I'm doing it as a good Samaritan, forget it. I merely want to get some sleep tonight. Well, Broadway, the old guy, who was maybe pushing on 60 or thereabouts, does good for me. In maybe an hour, I am feeling better and drop to sleep. Then, in the morning, I wake up and the train is in Miami. I get out on the platform and I see the old guy. He looks at me and says, Feeling better? Oh, sure, sure. Lots. In fact, I am a well man. And I wish to thank you. Don't. Just remember that you're unable to eat fish. You're allergic to it. Oh, but look, mister, I Goodbye wish to... buy and keep away from fish. Hey, wait! Hey, I... hey, hey, Georgie. Oh, hiya, Lou. Yeah. Say, see that old guy getting in a car? Yeah, what about him? Who is he? Oh, I don't know. I didn't see enough of him. Now, look. Uh, you bring your tools? Sure. Mm -hmm. But I sure wish I know who that old citizen is. He saved my life last night. Mm -hmm. And so few people are good to me that I wish to cherish the name of one who is. Okay, okay. Save it the later. Uh, I got the deal lined up. How does it look? Oh, great. Uh, where are your bags? Uh, platform. Where do we go now? You better check in the hotel. Don't use your right name. You'll know me better than that, Lou. It is just a question of picking the one I like best. Okay, let's get moving. We got just two days to pull this job and move out. Hot, huh? Plenty. Uh, your cut will be uh, 10 G's. My cut will be 15 G's or you will get yourself another can opener. 12. 14. 11. 13 and a half. 13. I am in business. Leave us go. <laughs> Well, Broadway, 13 G's is not bad for a day's work, so... Well, Georgie, I ask you to skip the details. Broadway, I only got today and tomorrow morning before I will have to skip everything. Do you begrudge me this hour? I am sorry. B but I do not see what all this has to do with performing a great public service. You will see in a minute. Well, I check in at a hotel. I and Lou arranged to meet later at a place called the Bath and Sailing Club. It is a bad name because I do not see anybody taking a bath or sailing. Although some of the dolls in the dining room seem to be dressed for the first occupation. Then I see a beautiful pancake walk in and sit at a table by the window. Now, Emil, the head waiter, is a good friend of mine. So I ask him who the doll is, and he says... The one in white, Mr. George? Yeah, the pancake with the dress that is made for dolls like her. Mr. George, she is cemetery bait. Uh-oh. Married, huh? To a jealous husband. This is bad arranging. Her husband is very selfish. That he is. My, my. She is very lovely. Oh, gorgeous. But there is something about her I do not like, Emil. Name one thing. I do not mean in the way of equipment, but in the way her eyes look. To me, they are heavenly blue. They are on the cold side. Tiens, cold or not. She is beyond us, Mr. George. Especially since her husband is one of the best amateur marksmen in the world. Oh? Now I see why you call her cemetery bait. However, I have heard that she is uh, <clears throat> looking around. It is a brave man who will overlook her husband. Ah, uh, yes, but you will excuse nothing. Hiya, George. Uh, uh, Emil? Sit down, Lou. Yeah. Uh, see you later, Emil. Yes, sir. Yeah. <laughs> Well, it's all set for tonight, George. My goodness, I hardly have time to get settled. You can do all right after you crack the job. Now, look. Here's the address. Take a good look. Okay, I got it. Mm -hmm. Right. Now, the maid who gives me the tip says the best time to think of the job is about one in the morning. I will have to keep late hours. For the love of might, will you shut up and let me talk? Go ahead. Okay. The safe is a tin can. You ought to be able to take it apart with a hairpin. Lou, you know I do a very neat job. No blasting, no drilling. I do not like to ruin other people's property. Well, getting a can open is your job. Once you get the stuff, I'll pick it up and get it out of Miami. Like usual, huh? huh? It, no, it wouldn't look good for us to take the wind right after the job's done, so we'll stick around a couple of days. Then I'll leave. You'll follow. Okay. One o'clock this morning, huh? Yeah. And, and, and Georgie... What, Lou? Uh, please uh, don't take any samples. What do you mean? I mean, I hope your pockets do not have holes in them so little trinkets slip into the linings. Lou, I promise you, I will hold out nothing. Okay. Go right to your hotel. I'll pick up the stuff. It'll be out in Miami in an hour. Yeah. 
And I... Oh, what's the matter? Huh? I just think. That pancake who just leaves. Looks just as good from this side as the other. Keep your mind on your work. Lady, you can have all the hobbies you want. So, Broadway, I wait until about 1 a.m. in the morning. Then I go to the address Lou gives me. There is not a soul there. I had the layout, so I go right to the safe and start work. I use my own little gadget that I invent. I... Well, go ahead. Why do you stop? I wonder why the government never lets me have the patent I ask for on that gadget. Well, Georgie, they have got very peculiar ideas about some things. Yeah, I guess so. Anyway, I work away when I hear the front door open and close. I take a quick look. And who do you think it is? Uh, Buffalo Bill? He is dead. Well, I give up. Who is it? The beautiful pancake I see earlier that night. This is her house? It turns out that is the case. Anyway, she is with a guy. Know who the guy is? Georgie, before you finish this story, they will put you in the juicer and I will never know what happens. Please proceed. Who is the guy? Remember little Eddie Baker? Baker? Oh, oh, sure. sure. The shake man. Yeah, blackmailer. Broadway, he is very crooked. More than somewhat. So what happens? The doll does not turn on the lights, but they come into the room where I am going about my business. I see that Eddie Baker is now wearing a little mustache, and he is dressed to kill. I duck in a closet behind some clothes, and I hear the doll say, No, Tommaso. Don't turn on the light. I thought you said we would be alone. We are. Cora, I do not like this. What if someone saw us? Who could? Huh. Frightened, Tommaso? Your husband. Away on a fishing trip. But he may come back sooner than you expect. I don't think so. He likes to fish. Cora, you're so lovely. Am I? You know you are. So? Listen to me. Why can't we go away together? How much money do you have, Tommaso? None. Nor do I. Your jewels. Tommaso, the way I like to live, they wouldn't last a year. I guess not. But you don't I... know what it's like. Married to a man who watches every move. You might have someone watching us now. No, we were careful. Cora, what are we going to do? That's why I brought you up here. We've got to talk about it, Tommaso. About what? Cora, what are you thinking about? My husband. Yes? He loves me. <laughs> he loves me, Tommaso. He loves me so much that when he dies, I'll get everything. This estate, the yacht, the money. I'll be very wealthy, Tommaso. I could marry anyone I wanted. Me, perhaps? You said, perhaps. <laughs> When, Tommaso? Not here. Not in Miami. Why not? It's got to look like an accident. You will be leaving for New York in two days, won't you? Yeah, why? There's many more possibilities for an accident in New York. Yeah, there are. <laughs> Do you love me? Wait and see how much. <laughs> Well, that is the story the gentleman George tells me so far. And even though I am sitting in a penitentiary listening to it, I cannot leave because I wish to know what happens. I find out, and it is very strange indeed. And I will tell you about it in a minute. Now, back to the Damon Runyon Theater and the famous story, Cemetery Bait. Like I say, I am sitting with Gentleman George in the death house listening to him. And he goes on to wit Viz. What time is it, Broadway? Mm, half past three, why? My, my. Time goes real fast in a place like this. Yeah, 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 it does, George. But, but you are telling me a story. Yeah, and I wish you to promise me that you will tell it so everybody can see what a great public service I do, even though I am waiting to be fried. I promise, George. Okay. Well, I hear this Cora doll and Eddie Baker, whose name now seems to be Tommaso, set up a thing to knock over her husband, who seems to be interfering with their amusement. But 
I figure it is none of my business until the next day I am at the beach with Lou Adolia. That was a good job last night, Georgie. You are happy with it, huh? Yes. <laughs> I figured the stuff should bring maybe more than 80 grand. Yeah. It is gone, huh? Yeah, it was out of Miami an hour after you slipped it to me. And when do I get my cut? As soon as the heat's off. Okay. Yeah. Meanwhile, this is a very fine life. My, my. There is a doll wearing a handkerchief. Yeah, yeah. But uh, what a small handkerchief. Uh-huh. Hey, Lou. What's the matter, cops? No. no. There is the old guy who saves my life on the train. Look, will you forget that? All, he, all you had was a stomach ache. I am very grateful to him. It is very seldom that people do things for me, and I wish to speak to him. Okay, okay, go ahead. I will be right over there where the red umbrella is. Yeah, yeah, I see. Uh, uh, Georgie. Georgie, sit down. Huh? Why? Sit down, you flat brain. Sit down. What is eating you? You know who that is? Yes, he's the man who saves my life. He's the guy whose joint you knocked over last night. Oh, no. Oh, yes. Colonel Samuel B. Venus. Lou, why do you not tell me this before I do the job? My, you... Look, how did I know he was the guy that cured your stomach? Besides, there's 80 grand. I am very sorry. I Will do you I... shut up? I am very ungrateful. I should speak to him. Look, just keep away from him. I guess you are right. Of all the dumb clocks you neck over a guy's joint, the thing's still hot and you want to talk to him. Maybe I will find some other way to thank him. Maybe I will... Holy mackerel! Georgie, what... you give me the noise. What's now? I... I just remember something. That's impossible. But what is it? I... Nothing, Lou. Nothing, I guess. <laughs> But I do remember something, Broadway. This Colonel Samuel B. Venus is the husband that Cora and Tommaso are going to decease. Yeah, that is right. Now, personally, I would not care if they do it on somebody else. But the Colonel saves my life. You understand? Sure, I understand. But somehow it seems to be a little unimportant considering where we are. Huh? Nothing, nothing. So what happens then, Georgie? Well... I figure I will try to do something without getting myself in trouble for the little job I do for Lou Adolia. So I stick around, and I find that the Colonel and Cora are going to New York by boat. So I go the same way. The boat is named the Castilia. Castilia, Castilia. That is very familiar. Sure. I just tell it to you. No, no, I mean I read something about that boat. Uh... Oh, well, I will tell you what it is you remember. Yeah, well, all right. You are on the boat. So is the Colonel and the Dal Cora. Aha. Uh -huh. And so is Tommaso. But you know what? I do not know what. What, Georgie? The Cora Pancake and Tommaso never even look at each other. It is like they are strangers. That is very strange, right? Well, perhaps they do not wish the Colonel to see them together. Yeah. Yeah. That is real smart of you. But I watch them. But they never make a move to do in the old guy. Then it comes up one night and I am in my cell. Cell? Cabin. Oh. Yeah. I'm in my cabin with Lou Adolia, who is along. I'm just getting some sleep when all of a sudden I hear a lot of noise. Hey! Hey, what's that? Ah! Uh, the, the, the bell! Hey, what's going on? Who is throwing a party? George, let's get out of here! This tank is on fire! What? Come on, quick! I am not dressed! Let's go in your big boat, come on! Which way, Lou? Come on, let's get up the stairs. With all this water around, how does a boat catch on fire? Come on, move faster, Hey, you? wait a minute. What for? Look, I have got an idea. Oh, not at a time like this. You go ahead. I will follow. What are you going to do? A lot of people will be rushing out and maybe leave valuables. I can pick up some trinkets. You stop the right time. Ah, it is all right. You go ahead. I will make hay while the sun shines. Okay, it's your funeral. See you later. Anybody in here? <laughs> uh... Uh, I just wish to tell you the boat is on fire. Well, Broadway, I go from place to place and I pick up a few odds and ends. In fact, I do all right. Then I get to one cabin and go inside. I see nobody at first until I start to leave. Then I see there is somebody on the bed, all tied up and gagged. You know who it is? Colonel Samuel B. Venus. How do you know? Never mind. What what happens then? Well, I get him untied and get the gag out of his mouth, and he says, thank you. 
Thank you. We've got to get out of here. Yeah, it seems the right thing to do. I what is the matter? I can't walk. They they tied my leg so tightly the circulation stopped. Well, I will have to carry you. Wait a minute, I want to get something. I will get it for you. Uh, that drawer in the small cabinet. There's a gun. Uh, this? Yes. Yes, I I I know you. You saved my life. Now I save yours. Oh, yes, yes, I, I remember. Oh, 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 wait, I I can't get up. Look, hold my arms. They did this. They did this to me. Huh? Who? Cora. Cora and that man. That man in the white polo cap and the coat to match. Little guy, black mustache. Yes. He hit me. They tied me. I'll kill him. What about her? Help me. Carry me. Oh, all right. Up you come. Uh, now, hang on. It's not her fault. She's just a child. But him, I, I don't even know him. Hang on tighter. I got to use my hands to feel through the smoke. Yes, yes, that poor child. She didn't know what she was doing. You think not? I know she didn't, but I'll kill him, that little man in the white coat and cap. I'll kill him. Look, Colonel, I have to tell you something. Save your breath. You'll need it. But I got to tell <laughs> Keep your mouth closed. <laughs> no doll is worth killing somebody for. She's, she's an innocent child. Okay, okay. I will not say anything more. We're almost on deck. Then I'll find him and I'll kill him. I get the old guy on deck. He is pretty done in, so I take a look around for myself on deck. Everybody is getting in little boats and on rafts. And I see a few things, and I do a little thinking about the old guy and the doll he thinks is an innocent child. Then I go back to where I leave the colonel, and I see he is looking out to sea. Look, look in that lifeboat out there. Do you see? Yeah, I see. Somebody in a white polo coat and cap. Oh, but better get on this raft, Colonel. That's the man. I won't let him get away. Look, Colonel. I'll kill him. You're going to shoot him? No. Nobody will hear the shots. But you cannot hit him at that distance. And the boat is bobbing up and I'll down. I'll hit harder targets than that. And for less reason. Watch. That is real good shooting. Yes. Yes, I've, I've never done better in my life. <laughs> no, I guess you do not. The little white cap is floating on the sea. I killed him. I said I would, and I did. Sure, sure. Now, we better get on this raft. Come on. No, wait, wait, Cora. We, we've got to find Cora. There is no time, Colonel. Besides, it, it is more than likely that she gets on a boat. I've got to find her. Look, I tell you, I take a look around. She is not on this boat. Then I'm not leaving until I find her, that poor child. I've got to find her. Do you understand? Colonel, once you save my life, <laughs> no. now I have got to do something for you. <laughs> like I say, I have got to get you in the raft. And it is easier if you are unconscious this way. So I get him on the raft, and it is not long before another big boat comes and picks us up. Yeah, I see. How are you doing, George? Huh? Oh, fine. Uh, got the time? Yeah. It's 3.40. Uh-huh. Anything you want? No, I guess not. Thanks just the same. Yeah. Take it easy. That guard is a real nice guy. There is another one who is not so nice. Probably because I take two bucks away from him, a two-handed pinochle. Yeah, but, but, but George... Huh? You say you do a great public service, and you wish me to tell people about it. However, I cannot tell people what it is unless you tell me. Oh, yeah, I am coming to that. First, got a cigarette? Sure. Here. Thanks. Light? Here. You are a nice guy, Broadway. I will be sorry to see you go. Oh, thanks, George. Now, let me see. I am telling you about my great public service. I will get an ashtray. I do not like to get this place dirty. Well, George walks to get an ashtray, and when he gets it, he comes back and gives me the payoff of the story, which I will tell you in a minute. I am saying, George gets the ashtray, comes back, and sits down. For a minute, he just looks off into space. And then he says, 
You know, I am criticized very severely for what I do when I get on that raft. Oh? And what is it you do, George? Well, it is very crowded. So I have got to push away a female character who is trying to get on. You do what? I push this character off. Especially when I see she has got a small black mustache. What are you talking about? Well, I do not tell you and I do not tell the colonel that when I take a look around, I see Tommaso making this Corridal change clothes with him at the point of a knife, thinking he can get in a boat reserved for women and children. What? Then, then the colonel, he shoots... Yeah, he shoots Cora. She deserves it, Broadway, because he is a nice old guy and she does not deserve him. Does he find it out? Yeah. He is now in a place where they keep guys who go off their rockers. Yeah. But look, George, why do you not tell everybody that it is not a female you push away? That it is this uh, Tommaso? You have still got some hours to clear that up. Well, I tell you, do I not? But I cannot keep you out of the juice. Hmm? Oh, you misunderstand. I am not here for giving Tommaso the heave-ho. Although that is the public service I speak about. Because I figure he is a menace to the sanctity of the American home. Well, then... then I am here because Lou Adolia forgets to give me my cut. And one night, I push his car over a cliff, and I forget to remove him from Sam. Yeah. Yeah, I see. Well, I, uh... I guess I will be going. Yeah. Thanks for coming, Broadway. Oh, not at all. Well, George, uh, bon voyage. Thanks. The same to you. And many of them. And so ends the famous Damon Runyon story, Cemetery Bait. Listen in again next week for... The Damon Runyon Theater. The Damon Runyon Theater with John Brown as Broadway is directed by Richard Sandville and the story is adapted for radio by Russell Hughes. Vern Carstensen is in charge of production. This is a Mayfair production.